So just tell us, uh, what, you know, what got you into baseball? Who inspired you to play? Um, did you have a favorite team growing up or favorite player? Or uh, what inspired my dad inspired me to play. Uh, I was I started playing when I was three years old. He actually, uh, it's a funny story. When I was about one years old, he. Uh, I guess there's a glass marble or something around the house, and I picked it up and I threw it across the living room. And ended up hitting my mom in the nose and breaking her nose. Oh so boy. my dad, at that point, you know, thought he had a baseball player. So I started playing when I was three. I uh, didn't start pitching until I was a sophomore in high school. Okay. So uh, that was kind of new to me. I, I was always a smaller kid, and then my sophomore year, I kind of I, I shot up and started growing a little bit. And my coach was like, "I think you'd be a good pitcher. I'd like to try it." And so I didn't start pitching until sophomore. Uh, ended up getting drafted uh, my senior year of high school. Wasn't sure if I was going to sign. Kind of a thing where they said they were going to take me fourth, seventh round. I felt it didn't go till the second day in the 37th. So I was like, you know, I'm, that's fine. I have a full ride to go to college and I was going to get a nursing degree and try to be an emergency room nurse or come out after three years and, you know, have that degree mm -hmm. partially done. Uh, they ended up coming back with, you know, the money and the going ahead and paying for college so it was kind of a thing where I felt like I couldn't turn it down you know this is an opportunity I, I can go with it you know the money could help me survive for you know five or six years and I'd be fine and from there you know it, it, it just kind of you know took off uh, had a good first year struggled for you know my first full season which was tough because I mean I was 19 years old playing 142 games or whatever it is and uh, you know, just getting used to that in your body. But uh, then I kind of came back more prepared and was back to relief in 2008 and uh, stayed there in 2009. 2010, I started off relieving. Went to be a starter about a month and a half in because we had a couple injuries, a couple guys get sent down. I had, did well, uh, got sent up to Buffalo did well there and then this year I was uh, in the rotation to start the year struggled oh my first two games I was in double A pitched well then struggled through this stint I was in Buffalo it was kind of you know up and down my mechanics were a little messed up it was lost command a little bit and not there just like here you know if you don't have command you're gonna be in trouble so they sent me back down to double A and said you know we see you being a reliever up here. We see that's where you're gonna help us. So I want you, to, we want you to work on that and get, get that going. So I kind of fell back into that. I already knew how to treat my body and whatnot. So that wasn't too hard to transition. And uh, now, you know, find myself here. Now, um, just talk more about like what you had to do, like body-wise. You know, you said you were 19 and you just had to readjust. Just talk about like what were some of the things that you had to do to prepare. Uh, I mean, being 19, I was kind of you know you think you're young and you can do anything, you can get away with anything. But it was a long season, you know, bus trips and everything like that. And the hundred, I threw 110 innings that first year, which you know, in that span I wasn't used to. I was used to. You know, throwing my high school season, having a break, and then going and throw summer ball. So it was kind of more, you know, what shoulder. I didn't really do shoulder routines and stuff like that in high school. It was kind of just, you know, you can work out when you want to. It's optional. So when I came in, it was, you know, knowing my body, knowing that, you know, I figured out that the night after I, the night I threw that night, I, if I did shoulder exercises, you know, my arm would feel better the next day. So it was just getting used to that and getting that where I could get my arm feeling good and my body was there too and it would last the 140 games, which is now 160. Right. And uh, just talk more about like nursing, like when did like uh, you get into that whole idea of possibly being a nurse? Uh, I was, I guess I was a junior in high school. Uh, I kind of, it was either a fireman or a nurse, which that degree I could kind of do either one if I wanted to, because right. I would have, you know, I would have that background. So, but my brother-in-law was a fireman, and one of my good friends, his dad was a fireman. Me and him would go to the fire station to stay there overnight, because his dad was the captain, so we'd stay there overnight and make runs with him on the weekends. And just, you know, we couldn't get involved, but I mean, it was just fun doing, you know, going on the truck, seeing what all they do. And it was, it was kind of one of those things where 
I liked it because it was something, always something new. It wasn't the same thing, you know, it was, maybe it was a house fire. Maybe it was, you know, somebody fell on the stairs. Maybe somebody broke their own. It was always something different and it, you never knew what it was going to be. And nursing, I was going to go be, a, I wanted to be an emergency room nurse. Right. So it was, it's kind of the same thing, all right? This person might have a broken. It was always something different. I liked the thrill of not, you know, not knowing, not the same thing all the time. So that's kind of how I got into that. And just talk about like what your reaction was when the Mets just called you up, and then yesterday you were part of the Sterling Awards. Just talk about just this whole experience so far. Ah, uh, I mean, it was it was exciting. I was in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. I kind of had a feeling that I was. My manager talked to me a little bit and said, you know, I think I'm pretty sure they're thinking about calling you up. I'm not sure when, but I think they're going to. Uh, we had talked about it, but I, I was kind of like, you know, I, I got to do my job here first before I can, you know, think about that. Because if I get my thoughts on that, you know, my concentration won't be there and I won't be focused on the game. But I, I was on the way to the field on the bus. My pitching coach sent me a text message said, come into the office when you get here. And I was like, Man, that's weird that he would send me a text message saying, when you get here, come to the office. And I kind of thought it was about fantasy football because we had a fantasy football league. So I was like, all right, maybe it's about fantasy football. But I go in and they shut the door and, and Wally Backman, the manager, told me. And uh, you know, it was exciting. There's tons of thoughts going through my head. I called my wife, let her know. Called my mom and dad, let them know, and uh, had to take a four-hour cab back to Binghamton, and then uh, I got in about midnight, packed all my stuff at the field, packed all my stuff at the house, uh, got to bed about two o'clock, woke up at seven, drove here. It was just exciting, you know, uh, knowing that you know as a kid, you, my dream was you know to be a professional baseball, be a major league baseball player, and you know it finally come true, and it was definitely exciting. And what was it just like being able to put on the uniform for the first time and just stepping onto the hill for the first time? It, it was kind of one of those things where you, you want to pinch yourself. You're like, I mean, for the first you know week or so, and even now, it's it's like you wake up in the morning. It's like, you know, is, is this real? I, I mean, am I here? But it, it, there was so much adrenaline and nerves and thoughts, and it was it was awesome. Just you know, I, I just told myself, all right, just focus, do what I've done in my leagues, and I'll be all right. Now, was Wally or anybody else when you were going up through the minor league system influential to you and just any advice, any... There was, you know, quite a few coaches that were inspirational to me. My first year, I went back to the bullpen. Mark Valdez was my pitching coach, and, you know, he told me that, you know, use your sinker and you'll be fine. And so it was kind of one of those things that I'd come in, you know, in whatever situation, throw my sinker, get a ground ball to a player, do it, do whatever. And he just kind of, you know, helped me fill into that role and, uh, getting used to being a leader and then uh you know phil regan in high pitch coach he was awesome you know just uh mentally and mechanically he he kind of fine-tuned things and you know got me on that role that was that was that was good uh Ricky Bones, he, you know, just, just in his fact, almost enjoying the game, you know, don't, don't take advantage of the game, but enjoy the game. But I mean, there's numbers of guys, numbers of managers, coaches that I've had the whole way that, you know, have helped me. And has your family been able to see uh, you achieve your dream and be on they the have. yet? My wife's been here the past four days. Awesome. Uh, my parents came to the first game here and uh, watched the series. So, and and just, I got a bunch of family coming into Atlanta and St. Louis. Oh, so. man, it's going to be great. Yeah. And just talk about, like, being a younger player and just being able to keep your focus. You know, you're in a big market club. Just talk about how you're able to balance. You know, it's not, it hadn't been that bad. Just, I mean... At the time I've been here, I've you know, gone out with my wife, had dinner or whatever, just kind of enjoyed the city, walked around, you know, seen all the World Trade Center, the Empire State Building, Central Park, all that. And uh, it's it's not been too bad. It's, you know, it's sitting around talking to some of these guys like Gesringhausen and Birdie, you know, guys that have been here for years and just kind of picking their minds and, you know, seeing how they go about their business has kind of helped me. I was about to say, do they help keep younger guys like you grounded and yeah, I give mean, you they, tips with the stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. They're you know always on us. You know, if we make one little wrong move, you know they're there to tell us and correct us and show us the way. And and then, and also in another sense, they're there to give us you know 
give us advice and tips of how they approach the game and how they approach a hitter or whatever the situation might be. And like, if there was a young pitcher that came up to you and said, you know, what do I need to do to be successful in the game? What would you tell them? I mean, just just trust your stuff. There's a reason, you know, the Mets have drafted you. There's a reason why you're. If they're in a minor, there's a reason in the minor league baseball. They get called up here. There's a reason they get called up here. Just trust your stuff, and you know that's what's got you here. Don't try to do too much. Don't try to just be left. Do what you've been doing to get to this point, and you'll be fine. I guess just to the fans, do you have anything to say to them? That I know they've been enjoying the work that you've been doing for them so far. You know, it's awesome. It's one of the coolest things just being able to play. You know, in front of 25, 35, how many ever thousand people, and their support's been awesome. And uh, it's it's great having that amount of fans there, Chin Young.